In this video, we will talk about cycles. So let's start with the definition. The cycle on n distinct vertices, where n is greater than or equal to three, has the following edges. So, you know, the easiest way for me to explain what this means is by drawing some examples. So I'll do that and then I'll come back and return to what this definition and what it's saying. So the way I denote a cycle is I write capital C and then I write n, where n is the number of vertices. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's draw C3, C4, and C5. So for C3, we have three vertices. Three vertices. So let me call the first one V0 or, or V0. Then the next one V1 and the next one V2. So it's a cycle if the first vertex is connected to the second one with an edge. That's what this first part is saying. There's an edge from V0 to V1. Then there's also got to be an edge from the second vertex to the third vertex. So there's an edge connecting V1 and V2. And then, you know, once I've reached that last vertex, then I connect it back to my starting vertex. And that's what this last thing says. The last vertex, Vn minus one, connects back to the starting vertex, V naught. And that's a cycle. Okay, so what about C4? A cycle with four vertices. Okay, so let's say that Let's say that V naught is up here, and then V1 is here, and V2 is here, and maybe V3 is here. Okay, so V naught connects to V1, V1 connects to V2, V2 connects to V3, and then I've reached the last vertex, now I connect it back to my starting point, and I got a cycle. This is a cycle on four vertices. And then finally, let's do a cycle on five vertices. So maybe V naught is here, maybe V1 is here, Maybe V2 is over here. Okay, they don't always have to be arranged in a nice circular way. V3 and then the last one would be V4. Okay, so V0, V0 connects to V1. V1 connects to V2. Maybe it's a curvy edge. And V2 connects to V3. That one connects to V4. And then that one connects back to V0. And maybe it does it like this. Cool, and that's a cycle. That is a cycle. We've seen that you know when we have a graph, it's the exact the same graph if I just move the vertices around or change the shape of the edges, as long as the same vertices are connected to the same ones with edges. So this is actually the same thing as if I were to have drawn my five vertices in kind of a more circular shape and just connected them all like that. Try to convince yourself of that, that if you drag some of these vertices around and bend the edges that go with them, it'll actually make the same shape as this. Okay, so we say that a graph contains a cycle if it has a cycle as a subgraph. So what do we mean by that? So here is a graph right here. So a subgraph is, you know, a subset of this graph. I'm going to take a subset of some of these vertices and a subset of some of the edges that, you know, are connected between those vertices. So I see a, a cycle within this. There is a cycle here connecting these four. So let's just draw that. And that is a subgraph. So from here, and then it kind of goes down, and then over here, that was my cycle. That's within this initial graph. So this is a subgraph. Moreover, we say that the original graph contains a cycle. Okay, this is terminology that we often use um, in graph theory problems that involve cycles. Sometimes we, we care about this, you know, does the graph contain a cycle or not?